I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. This is the Iron Bowl Hour. Or as we like to call it, the show that understands that the NCAA is now apparently looking into whether or not Auburn players were using performance eliminating drugs this past season. On tonight's show, South Carolina versus Clemson that has the Hardy's Trophy. <laughs> the Hardy? What Hardy's. does that mean? Or, that or in some parts of the country, the Carl's Jr. Trophy, Will. <laughs> oh, oh, these are robots. I've seen those players. before. Robot football players. Okay. Uh, Fox uh, Sports sometimes uses a robot football gotcha. player. It looks a little more high tech than these. Hey, Reed, it's time for another Agree to Disagree. Well, as usual, Will, you're wrong. It's going to be Gus Malzahn. I didn't even say I, I thought you said something about Kirby Smart. Yeah, it's going to be Kirby Smart, but it's I didn't say It's going to be Gus Malzahn. With less than a minute left in the game, Nick Saban decided to take a knee and settle for a 49-point win, six points short of the Iron Bowl record for largest margin of annihilation. Should he have pressed for one last touchdown and a new historical mark in the process? Well, Reed, wasn't it nice in the Iron Bowl to finally see the soft side of Nick Saban and, and have him show a little That's, heart? No, Will. No, no, Reed, You can't knew. see the soft side of Nick Saban when he's fully clothed, Will. You should know better than that. <laughs> he knew that, that poor Gene Chizik was on his last leg. He, he was already going to fall off the cliff. There was no reason for Nick Saban to go and push him off the cliff. And, you know, Coach Chizik's a nice guy, right? And Nick Saban realized Are that. Are you arguing said, that Nick Saban did that to be nice? Is that really what you're arguing? Yeah, I think. I, so you're arguing that he should indeed have taken the knee? He did the correct thing by taking the knee, being a nice guy. And look, 49 points was plenty. That's, well, 49 points is a lot. There's no <laughs> right. doubt about that. And he covered the line and all those sorts of things, yep. which I'm sure he cares That's about important. as well. This was the wrong decision to make, Will. Here, Nick Saban had a chance not just to beat his in-state rival, right, right, but to absolutely crush them. This would have been pretty funny. What about the first time <laughs> they go down and score, right, from right. then on, march the ball down to the three-yard line and take yeah. a knee? Would have been three nice. plays. That would have been pretty awesome. In the end, this is just like a, it's Sort of, sort of a weenie move. It's kind of like, oh, we beat you real bad, but we don't really feel like beating you as bad as we could. We're gonna. Reed, don't you think maybe yeah. he felt bad about the rammer jammer cheer? How that was already <laughs> already gonna be rude enough. He's had what four or five years to get used to the rammer jammer cheer. I know it takes any normal person a couple of years to get over how ridiculous that is, but he's he's used to it by now. Not only did he not beat Auburn as badly as he could and should have, right? But by taking a knee when he did, and you saw how mad he was when he realized what was gonna happen. He just thought <laughs> right. the game was gonna be over. But instead, here comes little Trey Mason who gets to run for an extra three or four yards and, and all of a sudden becomes a thousand yard rusher and gets who all this. Who thought that Auburn could have had a thousand yard rusher? Now, I don't this think season. Trey Mason thought that they <laughs> no. could have, and certainly he didn't think so. And the game was almost over, and Alabama was about to score again until Nick Saban oddly took a knee with that just enough nice. time. Well, it's, he's not a nice person, and that's not why he did it. I don't know why he yeah. did it. We'll just chalk it up to some kind of lapse of judgment. Because he's cuddly and lovable. He's definitely Nick not Saban. that. Last Saturday showcased a variety of the best college football rivalries in the country. Which two schools represent the second best rivalry behind the Iron Bowl? Well, Will, there are a lot of great rivalries in the country. There are. So many, in fact, that I, I actually wrote down and made a list of, huh. of some of them. And that way we can just kind of go through them one at a time and That'll talk about That'll make it easy. It. Let's okay. do it. And see if we can come up with what's the second best. And we have okay. to disagree on that, remember? Okay, great. All right, first one up is Georgia versus Georgia Tech. Well, this is known as the clean, old fashioned hate game. Is this a good rivalry or not? Oh, uh, it's a fantastic rivalry. It, it, it's in state. Right there, they're, yeah. they're not too far from each other. Yeah, but Georgia Tech is nerd school, so this is not a good rivalry. Georgia generally kind of play dirty, they're rude, yeah, that's they're true. bullies, yeah. correct? They've got yeah. Todd Grantham as their defensive coordinator. He likes to fight people. And Georgia Tech plays like this. So what's better than the nerds versus the bullies, Reed? Well, not this game. It's never okay. an interesting game to watch, so that's a bad one. So you're wrong about that. Uh, I'll mark that disagree. off. Disagree. All right, next one is Florida, Florida State. There's no name and no trophy in this game. Is this even a rivalry at all? These are two powerhouse programs in the same state going against each other. Great rivalry. Okay, there is no such thing as a powerhouse program in the ACC, so you're wrong about that. This is definitely not a good rivalry. That's a crap rivalry. All right, next one, Will, is Ohio State, the Ohio State mm. University huh. versus Michigan. Once again, surprisingly, yeah. there seems to be no name for this game or a trophy. For no, it. but here's the thing, Reed. This has always been held up as one of the best rivalries in college football. But did but you hey, just hear me say there's no name or a trophy? Excuse me, Reed, let me okay, finish well, here. Right. It's not a good rivalry. These aren't even in the same state. This rivalry is so 
so good, they don't even have to have a name for this game or a trophy for it. That's one of the best rivalries there is. I'm going to put a check mark next to that one. All right, well, next up is Mississippi State versus Ole Miss. As you know, this is called the Egg Bowl. Right. I'm going to go ahead and steal this one from you. Of course, okay. it's not a good one. It's out of Mississippi. Nothing good comes out of Mississippi, Reed. In fact, if there were 50 rivalries we had to, had to rank, yeah. This yeah. would be 50. Nothing's as good as watching rednecks fight, and that's what this is. So that's a good one that gets a check mark. Especially if it was like muddy, mm -hmm. lots of rain. Yeah, no doubt about that. Game. All right, next up, Oregon versus Oregon State, the Civil War. Now, interesting thing about this, well, they play for the platypus trophy because it has a duck. That's an animal, a real animal. Right, It's sure. poisonous, too. Be careful. And it has a duck bill but a beaver tail. See how see what they did there? I see. What are the chances that there would be an animal that would make for such a great trophy for that game? Here's the thing, Reed. Because yeah. they named it the Civil War, mm -hmm. they're obviously not taking real events that happened and devastated this country seriously enough. Bad rivalry. No, it's a good rivalry because they picked an animal that is, did you know this, Will? A monotreme. Did you know that? <laughs> Why do you know so I, much? I can't about actually can't even remember what a monotreme means right now, but it is a platypus is a monotreme for the trophy. It has something to do with reproduction. All right, well, here's a controversial rivalry. This is Indiana playing Purdue. And listen to this, they are fighting every year for the old bucket. Can you believe that? I put a curse word right in the name of the trophy, the old bucket. I can't I, believe that. I think it's the old oaken bucket. I right? don't think so. The, oaken? the old oaken bucket. Let, oh, let's that's get to a the typo next one. then. Yeah. Last one. This okay. is a good one. My favorite. Yeah. This is Harvard versus Yale. Now, if you know me and if you, viewers know me, <laughs> there's nothing I like more than getting a cup of tea, sitting down and watching this game, and it is some rowdy football. <laughs> I, bet. Yeah. I was going to say, if there's one rivalry that you would love, it would be Harvard versus oh, Yale. Oh, I do. Listen, the Crimson versus the Bulldogs of Yale, right? And then, and listen, <laughs> Their one of the best. Is, is a color? Uh -huh, yeah, the, the, the Crimson? Harvard Crimson, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then at the end of the game, Will, some of the handshakes you see there are just really masterfully done. And, and these, are, these are just gentlemen of the game yeah. and people we should all look up to. I'll just let you have that one, Reed. Speaking yeah. of masterfully done, up next we're going to go to an art gallery and really harshly judge some artists. Do they have cups of tea there? Because <laughs> I could use a cup of tea. Reed, we've come to the Incubate Gallery in the beautiful Avondale area of Birmingham to see the finer side of the Iron Bowl rivalry. That sounds just fine to me, Will. Great. You know, Reed, no one's officially said it, but I can only assume they have us here to judge all these paintings. Yeah, just like the Iron Bowl, Will, this is about winners and Auburn. So we're going to look at the paintings and try to pick a winner. And of course, we've got to come up with some criteria for that. The two criteria we're going to use. Most expensive? No, that's not going to be part of it, right? This is not a normal art sort of thing we're okay. dealing with here. Uh, basically, we're looking for one painting that at the same time, simultaneously, exalts one school while also degrading the other. Because let's face it, that's kind of what the Iron Bowl has been about recently. Exalting. Mm -hmm. Now, I think, you know, obviously, if we look at the War Eagle painting. Well, there's some confusion here by the artist, clearly. That's well, not an eagle at all. No, well, unless it's a very poorly painted eagle. This it's is possible. True, yeah. It's just a terrible artist. Now, Reed, moving on. This is, this is beautiful. This is a... Uh, it makes me hungry almost because you can tell it's done with the icing. Now, Lydia Poor, you're responsible for what looks to be the centerpiece, right? Of this uh, whole. <laughs> about that. Well, it is, though. It's <laughs> right there in the middle, uh, the Big Bear Bryant picture. And, you know, here's my question Do you think it's fair that yours is an actual photograph of Bear Bryant? <laughs> Now, Reed, this one is, is both beautiful and confusing to me. It yeah. makes me a bit exalted just looking at it. Well, I know a thing or two about art. Let me tell you what happened here. This yeah. is a painting that was accidentally left outside in the rain, so unfortunately we're not uh, able to make out. I see. Uh, with them. I so, see. That's a sad situation. It is. Still beautiful. Yeah. Is that an African elephant or an Indian elephant? That, that's actually an Alabama elephant. An Alabama yes, elephant, yes. okay. I've seen those at the Birmingham Zoo. Yes. There seems to be, this is just about Alabama. I guess there's no hint of Auburn in that painting, right? Just the guts here in the front, just some remains. Oh, some Auburn guts, I see, okay, mm -hmm. which we can tell because, oh, well, I see that. They bleed there. orange and blue. Okay, that's okay. So this is a, sort of a violent painting. It is, it's yeah. very aggressive. Now, Will, here is what I like to see a lot. This is an artist that you can tell these are done by the same artist here because the yeah. label tells us so. Okay. And these are two pieces, one of which is clearly about Alabama. We see Tide there, and that piece is in focus. The rest is blurry. That's obviously been 
sort of inspired by Instagram. Yeah. And then of course here we have an Auburn piece that's uh, that's sort of about Gene Chiswick and his truck full of toilet paper. Oh, I was gonna say it was an, an homage to the, to the trees here in their final days. Oh, okay, well I, th I think it really is more of a statement of Gene Chiswick here in his final days. <laughs> Either way, they're both gone. Yeah. Calvin, these are terrific, two of my favorites, but I can tell that you don't get football, and here's how I know. Number one, these little animals are adorable, and number two, the names of these paintings are Elefante and Tigre. Why so, why so artsy with the football paintings? Really, I think this artist missed some opportunities to, you know, what, what I would have seen here with this picture of Bear Bryant is maybe sort of like a conversation bubble here, uh, and it just says Cal College. Cal College. Cal College, and that really would have put this one in the top ranks of what we were looking for. It's very unfortunate. Yeah. Here you have gone ahead and put together a piece of artwork that just states emphatically to me, it says, the 1941 national championship claimed by Alabama is in fact not legitimate, and we're gonna knock out maybe the 1973 championship as well, bump them back down to 12. Did you, did you realize how controversial this piece of artwork would be when you created it? Well, <laughs> no, because the 12 actually represents Joe Namath. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm assuming <laughs> that once again, this is bumping them back down to the more reasonable number of 12 national championships. That would be correct, yes. Well, that's, that's very bold, Billy. I'm very <laughs> impressed by that. Here's the thing here. You can tell that it's degrading yeah. to Auburn because you have the tiger here, but look, the tiger's not saying rawr. No. The tiger's saying meow. Oh, it does say meow. See, look at that. Meow. It's right there. Sure, yeah. And so that, of course, is making fun of this tiger. And look at this alliteration okay. here, Will. As you know, I'm a language arts teacher. You are. Bama, boom. Look yeah, at that. I like that. Will, there are a lot of pieces of artwork in this in this showing. There are a lot. There are a lot. And there are a lot that are somewhat confusing and some that are controversial. But <sighs> I think we may have stumbled across the most controversial okay. yet. And I'll be honest with you, I'm having a hard time figuring out how it works into the theme. Okay. This piece to me just seems to say that yeah. women are handicapped and I don't get it. Yeah. Now one thing I noticed and uh, my producer pointed this out because it's a very nice detail I think in your artwork is you have over here in the back corner um, some goal posts and you have it both the way that the Alabama kickers seem to see it on top yeah. and then the way it actually is for all other kickers at the bottom they're much larger. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. This painting is beautiful, obviously, yeah. and it really hits one of the big criteria that we have for judging uh -huh. these paintings. As you can tell by the eyes of this eagle, it is exalted. I, uh, it, I, it, is just, it is just exalted. It's barely, barely even awake hanging on to the bridge. I think we need to talk, stop and talk about something here. Well, I think, do you understand what the word exalted means? Yes, and the, the more we film here without coffee, I'm, I'm getting exalted. I think you might be thinking of exhausted, Will. This is, we're exalted. Remember, what we're looking for is a piece of artwork that exalts one school, which is to hold it up in praise. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It is called Tiger Stripes, and I guess if you look at it this way, it does it say Tiger? No, it says Oh, it's one of these if you turn it upside down. If you look at it this way, you can read Snarling. This is an H. This is an H. No, that's a... All right. Interesting. Awesome. Yeah. Now let's see what's in this part of the gallery here. Okay. Oh, wow. What's okay, I see oh, that. Mercy. Yeah. How oh, about that? that? Yeah. Now, that. this is obviously commentary on Auburn here this year will the only bowl you may not pick up on this reference the only bowl they'll be going to is the toilet bowl. Oh, sure. And enough. that's what we have right there. Nice. Well, read like normal. We couldn't agree on a winner, so we each chose our own. Yeah, here are the paintings that we selected based on the criteria that we discussed earlier. Uh, here's the one that I chose with the Alabama and also the degradation of of Auburn and this, well, that's not even one we looked at. Yeah, but I like it. Well, I am still not sure what I'm more disappointed by there, your selection of a totally non-football related painting or the total lack of sips and strokes at that place. What was up with that? I'm hardly sipping at all, Reed. Yeah. But hey, some folks that have been sipping on something, an average Joe Auburn fan, an average Joe Alabama fan, up next, Top of Vulcan. Reed, it's time for rapid fire questions on the grill, brought to you by Billy's Sports Grill with huge Alabama fan, Eric Blackerby. All right, here we go. If Auburn had to pick just one mascot, which one should they keep? The tiger, 
the Eagle or the NCAA letter of inquiry? I'm going with the letter of inquiry. That one will be around for a while, and, right. and it keeps coming back. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Better feature outside of a football stadium, the Walk of Champions at Alabama or the discount player memorabilia at Ohio State? Walk of Champions, mm -hmm. I mean. You can get some good deals in Ohio I was State. Say, though, yeah. Who's the best college coach of all time? Bear Bryant or Bear Bryant? Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that. Mm -hmm. a third Outside option. of the Bear Bryant. Better sideline reporter, Tracy Wolfson or Holly Rowe? Uh, Tracy Wolfson really? by a mile. Can you do a Tracy Wolf Wolfson impersonation? I cannot. It's easy. You just go like this. Coach. Hey, coach. Coach. Hey, coach. If you had a time machine, what college football-related event would you go back and change in the past 10 years? Uh, the Iron Bowl of 2010. Oh, but it actually didn't happen, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Because we didn't play Auburn that day. We played Cam Newton. Oh. It's, uh, your team lost to one to guy? To one guy? Man. It's rough. Now, Reed, let's go ahead and do the same thing with an Auburn fan, even though it's completely irrelevant. Just, okay. to, just to be fair. Whatever. All right, Will, now it's time for rapid-fire questions with, I'm assuming, former Auburn fan Corey Bush. Little known yeah. fact, Corey uh, Bush, also former president, Will. What? Yeah. That's right. Bush, Bush of our right. fan club. That's yeah. right. When you look back on the season that Auburn has had this year, what was that all about? <laughs> Excellent question. Yeah. Um, it wasn't about much. What would you guess the hardest thing about being a quarterback is? Uh, having to put your hands under the center. Close. Mm, close, right behind fighting off the ladies. Fighting off oh, the ladies. I see. That's the I hardest see. part. Yeah. All right, let's get serious for a second. All right, let's. Does Big Al have a weight problem? Yes. Mm. I've been saying that for years. It's time someone finally admits That's right. it, though. It's he needs issue. to go to Diet Coke, or at least like half and half. You know how some people will order yeah. that in the drive thru That's not bad. No, they're not a sponsor. Slim we'll it say down Diet a Wickles. Diet Wickles. Okay. Diet Wickles. That's, right. That's better. That's better. Low sodium Wickles. I maybe. like it. If you had a time machine, what college football related event would you go back and change in the past 10 years? Um, let's see. I might go back and change. Hmm. Remember, you this year counts as in the last I, 10 years. I would, I would go back. Can I, can I change a whole season? Or like you said, one event. <laughs> one oh, event. Right. I did say yeah. one event. Right, because I would change a whole Chizik season. That That's right. <laughs> I probably match. would go back and have uh, Mount Cody miss that block against oh. Tennessee. And no, they just would have lost one game. They still would have played and won the national Yeah, Alabama can lose one game a year and still win the yeah. national That's true. I didn't think about that. Okay. Do you mind getting in the elevator with the uh, Alabama guy? No, not at all. All right. Okay, man. Reed, it's almost Christmas time, one of our favorite times of the year, and that means the Dean and Company Christmas special is coming up. Oh, that sounds exciting, Will. And of course, you and I made a video to air on the Dean and Company Christmas special this year, and all of our viewers at home are going to get to watch it right now. Before we do, though, little known fact, did you know this song was actually written by Bear Bryant? <laughs> I didn't. Or Shel Silverstein, or me, I can't remember. Let's just give Bear credit. Yeah. Well, Christmas time is almost here, and as the huge Alabama fans that you and I are, there's only one thing I can think of that I want. I bet you know what it is. Only one thing. Here we go. All I want for Christmas is a championship, a national championship, another championship. All I want for Christmas is a championship, and that is it. Very nice. And for Auburn to lose. And some more five-star recruits. And for a picture of myself with Bear Bryant on the Walk of Champions, painted by Daniel Laymore. And for Kirby Smart to get a raise and not consider becoming a head coach somewhere else. And for a sellout at a day this coming spring. And for AJ McGarren to somehow get three or four of eligibility so he can still be our quarterback. And for them to stop talking about going to a playoff system and just keeping the BCS so we only have to play one game a year. And for all those stupid gimmicky plays that Auburn always runs to lose yards every time they try to run it. And for our totally respectable misdirection plays to always be successful. 
And for our fans to stop doing embarrassing things like poisoning trees and that other incident I won't even go into detail about because you all know what I'm talking about. It was just nuts. And for Coach Saban to sign a lifetime contract, or at the very least one with some sort of buyout clause. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, and for Pat Dye to keep doing such a good job running the Auburn and for a houndstooth hat, and a houndstooth shirt, and a houndstooth jacket, and a houndstooth cup, and, and a houndstooth toothbrush, and a houndstooth steering wheel cover, and a houndstooth magic eye poster. Merry Christmas. Oh, and for the NCAA to reopen the Scam Newton investigation, and this time do it right. And for people to continue to accept the rammer jammer cheer as somehow being socially acceptable and not at all classless. That's it though. All I want for Christmas is a championship, a national championship, another championship. All I want for Christmas is a championship and all that other stuff we mentioned too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Reed, it's time for the Wickles Pickles Picks of the Week. And of course, we've already made all these picks throughout the whole season, and now it's time to announce the big winner. Yeah, if there were to have been a tie, we were going to try to pick who Auburn would pick as their next coach. But since that didn't happen, we don't have to do that. So, Will, when all is said and done, I'm not surprised. I beat you pretty badly. My final score was 358. Your final score was 363. A little lower the score, the better. So I win. And joke's on you. Now you have to hit or eat rather a full plate of hot wings from Billy's and I know that you are allergic to chicken so you're gonna die I win I live longer than you <laughs> of course the bad part about this bet is if there is a bad part when you're eating Billy's wings is they've made a very extra hot batch just for me so I will be interested to see how my tongue takes that and on you're next definitely week. allergic to chicken <laughs> on next week's show for sure hey viewers don't forget that you can follow us on Instagram Twitter and Facebook. It's at the Iron Bowl Hour. That is all the time we have for tonight. I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. Roll Eagle Reed. And War Tide Will. The Iron Bowl Hour is brought to you by Wickles Pickles. Add an exciting new taste to everything from Thanksgiving dinner to Saturday sandwiches. A Wickles Pickle will tickle your taste buds just right. Billy's Sports Grill in Birmingham, located in English Village, Overton Road, and coming soon to Northport. Billy's, come on in and feed your goat. And Vulcan Park and Museum, home to the world's largest cast iron statue. For more information, log on to www.visitvulcan.com. Did you drop the next Is question? Is it totally gone? <laughs> Was it the next question? Yes. I, I question. guess I, I dropped like two of them. Crap, I really? dropped the question. <laughs> <laughs>